My friends, in this video, I want to talk about the digestion and absorption of milk protein because I just published a brand new study. Protein provides the building blocks for all tissues in the body. However, protein first needs to be digested and absorbed before it becomes available to these tissues. The digestion and absorption is dependent on the type of protein that is ingested, but it's also dependent on how that protein is processed. For example, milk can be processed into milks with different types of fat content, cheese, yogurt, different protein products, and many more. And it's not hard to imagine that the digestion and absorption rate of these different products differ, even though they're all made from the same starting ingredient, milk. Milk contains two main types of protein, uh, whey protein and casein protein. Whey protein is a rapidly digesting protein. And in contrast, casein protein clots in the stomach and as a result is a slowly digestible protein. However, it's not as black and white as that. Uh, how these proteins are exactly produced will have an impact on their digestion and absorption rate. Whey protein can be produced in different ways. For example, rennet can be added to uh, milk and this will result in uh, the production of cheese. And when you take that cheese away, what you're left with is fluid with proteins in it. And those proteins are called cheese whey. Now, another way, uh, no pun intended, to produce whey is by the addition of acid to milk. And this will result in the formation of caseinate protein. And again, you're left with fluid with proteins in it. And these proteins are called acid way and a third way uh, is to filtrate your milk and uh, micellar casein proteins who are the biggest you can filtrate them out and then you're left with what's called soluble milk protein um, which is just another type of whey protein so you can see we have three different ways uh, to produce whey proteins and these three types of ways are not exactly the same but in this video i want to talk about uh, the different casein proteins as you can see there is caseinate protein and micellar casein but what's the difference between these two well micellar casein protein has a micellar structure so it's a, a big protein compound that's very structured and this structure is prone to clotting in the stomach and therefore casein is slowly digestible. In contrast, caseinate are just smaller parts of uh, a micellar casein protein and they're not structured and they're not very prone to clotting. So they are generally believed to be uh, more rapidly digested and absorbed than micellar casein. Now, another thing you can do with casein protein is to cross-link it. Uh, so what you do is you simply add an enzyme that links the proteins together. And you can imagine that changes its structure and properties such as its viscosity. Uh, and you might wonder like what type of protein should I think of then? So an example of Crosslink protein is uh, the mozzarella cheese on a pizza. Uh, and as you know, it's nice and gluey, very sticky. So, and that's really a property of uh, crosslinking. However, very little is known about how these different casein proteins digest and absorb. So therefore, we conducted this study in which we compared uh, micellar casein caseinate protein and cross-linked casein protein. And we found that uh, the caseinate was the slowest digestible protein of all three. And this was a bit surprising to us because it was generally believed that caseinate is 
more rapidly digested than micellar casein. Uh, one reason that might possibly explain this is that we used uh, calcium caseinate and uh, there is some suggestion that the addition of calcium to caseinate protein may result in clotting. However, there's no clear human evidence of that, um, but our data seem to support that theory. And this was further supported by our observation that the cross-linked caseinate was digested most rapidly because this cross-linked caseinate was sodium caseinate, so it didn't have the calcium. So uh, it might have been the cross-linking or it might have been the lack of calcium that explains why this caseinate variant was so much faster than the other caseinate variant. But perhaps the most uh, interesting about this study was the digestion and absorption speed of the micellar casein. So micellar casein is always called slow digestible protein. Uh, however, in this study, uh, it seems like it digested relatively rapid, or at least more rapid than you see in a lot of other studies. And there's no clear physiological explanation why the digestion of micellar casein seems to be so variable in different studies. So therefore, we now think that the exact production process of micellar casein has a drastic effect on its digestion and absorption rate. And in addition to processing, uh, the storage and the conditions of storage might also impact the digestion and absorption uh, of a protein. For example, we recently performed a study in which we used uh, glycated protein and glycation is a process that can occur during protein storage. And we saw that the glycation of a protein drastically reduced the absorption of one of the amino acids, lysine. So taking everything together, it seems that one, uh, different types of casein protein, so micellar casein and different caseinates uh, all digest at a quite different rate, even though they all seem very similar to each other. And two, even when we look at the same protein, so micellar casein, it seems that even that protein behaves very inconsistent from study to study. In other words, you cannot assume that the digestion and absorption of a protein will always be exactly what you expect. So it might be a generally slow protein, but it can be quicker or slower depending on its production and processing conditions. Now, don't get me wrong, uh, micellar casein should still be regarded as a slowly digestible protein. We've done many, many, many studies with it and our data clearly show that it's uh, more slowly digested than whey protein. It's just, it's variable. So, in conclusion, our data strongly suggest that protein processing can impact the digestion and absorption rate of a protein, and in addition, uh, protein storage also seems to be an important factor. I hope you liked the video. If you do, give it a like and subscribe. Uh, references mentioned in this video can be found in the description box and I'll keep my eye out on the comment section.